You're watching Basement Book Reviews, a project of the More Than This podcast. This is the place where we give brief practical reviews of some of the books we are reading for the show. Go to morethanthis.site to find podcast episodes and other book reviews. So for this first installment of Basement Book Review, uh, we're going to be looking at David Brooks' book, uh, The Second Mountain, The Quest for a Moral Life. And I'm a big fan of David Brooks. I won't uh, shy away from that. I really like his work. I think he's a good thinker for our times. Um, You know, if you look back uh, in his previous book, The Road to Character, uh, David Brooks told stories of morally exemplary people who demonstrated signature virtues. And this newest book, uh, The Second Mountain, takes the exploration of the road to character and turns it back on himself. The result is a style that is a mix of memoir, philosophy, social commentary, and a kind of public theology and ethics. Don't worry, it's very readable. Now, to the title. Uh, The analogy of the two mountains is explained at length throughout the first part of the book. The first mountain refers to striving for identity, to prove worth in conventional ways, to climb the ladder of success. It is more of a vertical orientation where someone in first mountain ways of thinking is striving for individual success. Now, the second mountain refers more to a quest for commitment to a moral good that considers community and society. Brooks says joy is not found at the top of the first mountain, but if people are lucky enough, they will go into the valley and approach the second mountain. Now, what does the second mountain have to do with? Uh, The second mountain has to do with the idea uh, that Jesus lays out when he says, whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. You know, the classic paradox. The second mountain is commitment, which is commitment to a spouse, community, faith, or philosophy. These are the anchors the self rests most comfortably upon, Brooks argues. Western culture has wrung the utility out of individualism and has passed into toxic individuality. Brooks calls for commitments to to form and shape our individual lives and societies in positive ways that can deliver deep meaning. So in this book, uh, David Brooks really dodges the main critique often leveled at his writing. Um, He is not a detached judge, uh, kind of sitting above all of social ills he diagnoses. He knows about them because his life fell apart atop that first mountain. We learn about Brooks' experience of coming to a sort of faith, his new commitment to marriage, his first marriage ended in 2013, uh, and about people he's working with through the Aspen Institute who are committed to improving their communities. Now, personally, I think Brooks is spot on in much of his analysis. I think I've lived out a lot of this as well. I don't want to claim boastfully that I'm on the second mountain. Uh, Critics of Brooks don't often like what they perceive to be elitism in his writing, but I don't know if they could refute much of what he argues for here. Uh, Brooks is uh, genre-defying. He's not quite journalist, not quite academic, you know, etc. His exposure of how much of the West tells us to carve out a sense of self is ultimately self-nullifying. I think it holds much merit. I think, you know, to quibble a bit, I think I have mixed feelings on Brooks' writing formula, often quotes an obscure author that explains his point and then reiterates the point on top of it. You know, I love quotes and I love to read broadly. So in one way, I love it because it's kind of a shortcut to reading a lot, but it also feels like cherry picking and the tenuous connection of individually selected quotes across the span of his arguments is pretty thin authority. Uh, I struggle to know if he uses these quotes as authoritative warrant or more innocently just to explain his points in different verbiage. Brooks also loves to fall back on the device of lists and steps for different things, which always feels like a self-help trope. However, I think it is meant to be illustrative and not authoritative, so I think it helps more than it hurts. You know, overall, I'd say I recommend this book. I think critics who have avoided Brooks because he sounds attached and elitist may warm to this book. It is not nostalgic, but it does harken back to a prior time to redeem some valuable things left behind in the post-sexual revolution era. I'd call this book, affectionately, a self-help book to help you lose yourself.